The city clings to the mountains. Each year it grows bigger. It won't be long until it completely covers the summits. In La Paz, the highest capital city in the world, 1,000 meters of altitude separates the wealthy and the poor. The poorer neighborhoods are located at the peak, 4,000 meters high, where the air is thin. On average, it takes a day for people to acclimatize to this lack of oxygen. Except, of course, for experienced mountain women like Maria. Don Carlos, quiero hacerme anotar, por favor. Me la anota tres maíz, dos bolsas dan. Every fortnight, Maria comes to La Paz to stock up on goods for her grocery store up in the mountains. Allá es un poco más difícil, que no podemos conseguir, estamos en distancia muy lejos. Por eso nos llevamos todo, así, todo completo para que no podamos sufrir. Ya, este que me dejará ahorita, vuelvo ya. Este que me mi lista, por favor. The grocer loads two tons worth of goods into the truck on her own. Maria sticks out like a sore thumb in Bolivia. She is one of the few women to drive in the mountains and some men make her feel like she doesn't belong here. And yet this grocer could teach these men a thing or two about driving. Bolivia is a rapidly developing country which continues to grow. Thanks to economic reforms, the government has never been so rich, however. Many roads are still in dire straits. Part of the blame lies with the various dictatorships from over the years which have delayed the country's growth. It takes courage to travel. Bolivia is home to some of the most dangerous roads on the planet. As well as earning a living, Maria provides assistance to isolated villages. Son unos compañeros igual que yo que antes he sufrido en la pobreza. Por eso me sacrifico. This poverty is widespread in the mountains. Lourdes is also fighting it. She looks after gold miners, but going to the mines is a gamble in itself. Lourdes alerts women to the dangers of pollution linked to the mining of precious metals. Las cooperativas trabajan con mercurio. Por eso adquirimos la enfermedad del cáncer del útero. Si tienes dinero, puedes salir a la ciudad. Y si no tienes dinero, tienes que morirte. Due to these mines and loggers, the environment is suffering. This ecological onslaught is partly responsible for the disasters that are ravaging the country. In the Andes, life is a constant struggle that the Bolivians face every day.
Maria is returning to her village. The back of her pickup truck is loaded with goods. As she gradually scales the Andes Mountains, the road disappears into the clouds. It's a good time to bring out the rum and make an offering. It's the best way to win the good favor of the Altiplano gods. Unlike some people. On the side of the roads, the headstones of travellers who were too hasty remind us that it's better to be safe than sorry. This accident has just taken place. The fall was dizzying. There are several deadly roads in Bolivia. Before embarking on hers, Maria is taking some precautions. When the brake pads overheat, the braking distance gets considerably longer. Best to let them cool down and take the opportunity to tighten the nuts and bolts in order not to lose a wheel on the bumpy roads. Maria has learned to fend for herself. Si fueran mis compañeros de nuestro pueblo donde yo voy, puede ser que me ayuden, pero se ve que la gente que no nos conoce no nos ayuda. Maria is now leaving the asphalt to take on the dirt roads that lead to her village. 62 miles across a sharp cliff edge. Accidentado es barranco, que da miedo. 
Si nos vamos a desviar del camino del Chamanco, no es así más. Podríamos salir sin vida entonces. Ahora ya no, ya no lo tengo miedo porque ya sé manejar. En cuanto de noche y de día, igual. Si Dios me presta la vida, voy a seguir trabajando hasta donde pueda. Maria is leaving the Andes and its relatively cool and dry for the Bolivian Yungas, where the weather is completely different. A gateway to the Amazon, the Yungas is a suffocating cocktail of heat and humidity, and it rains nearly all year round. All this water does not only damage the roads, it also weakens the mountainsides. Between November and March, the clouds of the Andes collide with hot air from the Amazon. This leads to torrential downpours and wreaks havoc across the Yungas. It has caused hundreds of landslides. This is one of the deadliest. A witness caught the disaster on film. In March 2019, the first landslide on this road made the whole track disappear. As the survivors cross it on foot, the earth begins to move again. The disaster claimed the lives of 70 people that day. Travelers are not the only victims. The inhabitants of the Yungas also live in fear of their homes being swept away. Esta lluvia al tanto nos hace sufrir. Con nuestro camino, mira, ¿Te has fijado cómo está? Feo. Y así nomás nosotros, así en esta comunidad vivimos. Nadie nos sé, recuerda de nosotros. Así estamos viviendo. Todo así, nuestras casas rajados, derrumbados. Así sí que estamos viviendo. Those who can afford it abandon the region. The others watch a whole life's work gradually disappear. Because the mountain doesn't always collapse at once. Each wet season, René sees his field of fruit trees grow by several dozen metres. At this rate, the earth will have surely swallowed up his house by next year. Un 100 metros debe ser casi, es de arriba. Todo este producto me va a tapar y yo, ¿dónde va a comer? Con esto yo vivo. The 
The Bolivian state maintains the roads as much as they can. However, it is impossible to strengthen the several hundred miles of rock walls that tower above the tracks. Lourdes takes this route on a regular basis. A few days ago, the road was cut off by floods. Higher in the mountains, temperatures have risen, the snow has melted, and streams have become rivers. Lourdes is travelling to the Tipuani gold mines, 162 miles across the Yungas. Man's desire for riches is proving to be catastrophic for the environment. All over the world, forests and rivers are being destroyed in order to extract precious metal from them. Son maquinarias para las cooperativas grandes. Siguen llegando. Lourdes is a former gold miner. She has set up an organization that supports women who work in the mines. She tries to convince them to give up this profession that will never make them rich, and more importantly, will leave them in a very precarious situation. El minero vive de ilusiones. Algún día voy a sacar oro. Todos los días es. Hoy día será que me va a ir bien. After 100 miles, Lourdes is forced to change taxis. On this part of the route, only 4x4s have a chance of making it through safely. While it seems the clouds have decided to spare them today, the road has got a nasty surprise in store for them. Dozens of cars have been blocked by this truck. A driver is taking the risk of towing it. It's a dangerous operation. The truck is stuck right in the middle of an uphill turn. There is a danger of it falling into the ditch. 
aquí va a venir, donde la, este, con ese loto, ahí sí va a venir. The travelers wait patiently. No one dares complain. The drivers know to stay humble. They could well be the next to get stuck. After three long hours of waiting, Lourdes is on the road again, not realizing that the weather won't be so mild in Tipuani. In recent years, severe climate change has made traveling in Bolivia problematic. The country is a hotbed for extreme weather events. In 2015, the second largest lake in the country disappeared, dried up forever, while other regions experienced devastating floods. Global warming is partly to blame, but it is exacerbated by the deforestation of the Amazon. The great rainforest covers some 40% of Bolivia. These loggers work legally, but they are doing a lot of damage to the forest. In order to reach the finest trees, they wipe out everything in their path. Within just two hours, they've formed a trail that's half a mile long. Luis is an indigenous man from the Tocana tribe. Wood is an essential source of income for his community. Every day, he sees the results of this reckless forest looting. The girth of this tree is bigger than Luis. This árbol no está autorizado para ser cortado. Entonces lo han cortado y han cortado una parte y la otra parte lo han dejado. Entonces. Seguramente porque el tiempo no les ha dado, como han visto que ya vamos a entrar nosotros al monte, lo han dejado, ¿no? Entonces han escapado y... Fortunately for him, the tree he plans to cut down is still standing, but not for much longer. Esta es la especie de chamanes, árbol maderable. Sirve para vigas, para muebles, también lo utilizan en la ciudad de La Paz. With their offerings, the indigenous people ask Pacamama, the goddess of the earth, for her blessing to cut the tree. El bosque para nosotros representa nuestra casa grande, donde ahí nosotros comemos, de ahí, de ahí nos vestimos, de ahí nosotros sacamos todo lo que es necesario para la familia. Entonces, por eso nuestro gran respeto a, al bosque, ¿no? a nuestras tierras, que son nosotros como TCO, Tacana, ¿no? Y... <tose> Sabes que vamos a tumbar mínimamente unos 20 árboles. Y esperamos que también el operador no, no falle. No es chiste derribar los árboles que mucha gente, muchos amigos han perdido la vida eh, haciendo este trabajo. 
tenemos mucho cuidado ahora porque también censando hay mucha gente que se hace picar con serpientes venenosas. It takes just 20 short minutes to cut down this tree that took more than 100 years to grow. The 100-year-old tree will be sold for around $500. The main culprits of the Amazon's deforestation are not independent woodcutters like Luis, but rather illegal loggers and large landowners who are constantly expanding their farmland by stripping the forest. 865,000 acres disappear each year. That's the equivalent of 530,000 soccer pitches. Back in the Jungas, Maria, the grocer, continues her journey with her truck full of goods. This is her tenth hour behind the wheel. Fatigue has set in and the road is not being kind to her. These dilapidated roads are an ordeal for drivers, but others have found a way to make money from them as a means of survival. Esos huecos con tierra para que ya no haya charco de agua. The two young girls, aged five and thirteen, take to the shovel as soon as they finish school, and they are far from being the only ones. Many tiny hands are at work all along this road. Their families work a little higher up in the fields. Fathers, mothers and grandparents harvest the majority of their food. The families sell any leftover potatoes to Maria. After 15 hours and 175 miles on the road, the grocer has finally reached the village. She's only had a few hours sleep, but Maria is already up.
yo tengo mi cabello desde mi juventud, casi no, nunca lo he cortado. Yo como mujer me siento orgullosa por mis cabellitos. Eh, Esa es eh, una cultura de nuestras abuelas. Un <risa> metro. Han sido así, por eso sí me los tengo. <risa> If it wasn't for Maria's grocery store, the 300 inhabitants of the village would be forced to drive for hours just to pick up school books, accessories or even a birthday present. The shop has everything the locals need. Bien estito. Entonces, eh, no me gusta decir que no hay. Me gusta darle, no importa de mi, de mi gasto, lo que yo tengo. Por ese viaje, señora única. Las madres necesitamos para mantener a nuestros hijos y a, si queremos hacer, estudiar igual, de la misma manera, por un cuaderno o por un bolígrafo, no podemos viajar a la paz. Sí. Por eso podemos barato las cositas, por ejemplo esto cuesta tres bolivianos, esto es para las jovencitas. No hay mucho dinero porque pues, hacíamos coca, ¿no? Así cultivábamos, ¿no? Cada dos meses se cosechaba la coquita, nos vendíamos, con el mismo nos comprábamos, había movimiento. Eh, eso nos ha cortado nuestro presidente, ¿por qué? No? De esa manera la gente ya se ha ido, nuestros eh, vecinos mismos se han movido a otro lado porque ya no hay de dónde vamos a vivir. Thanks to the coca leaves trade, the couple were able to open their grocery store. Maria and Juan live far away from everything, but they're quite the modern couple. In Bolivia, women do not really have a say in family matters. They often remain confined to household chores. Unlike many men, Juan is very proud to see his wife working. Sepa de la vida que cómo es de trabajo. Es difícil, pero nada imposible, ¿no? En la vida para sobresalir sobre todas las cosas. The couple have not forgotten their years of hardship back when they were farming coca with the villagers of a remote hamlet up in the mountains. A very strong bond unites them. This is why they risk the journey of bringing back groceries. No road stands in Maria's way, but there are still some parts where she prefers to leave the driving to her husband. Son unos compañeros igual que yo que antes he sufrido en la pobreza, son lo mismo y por eso me sacrifico. Algunas veces es peligroso también. Numerous traffic accidents have taken place on this road. None have been fatal, 
but enough to send cars to the scrap heap. Reaching this village is always a risky undertaking for the couple. Travelling on major highways is just as risky. There are thousands of potholes, some the size of swimming pools. The journeys are extremely tiring. Lourdes knows all about that. She is heading to Tipuani, the city of gold, and is having to change taxis for the third time due to a mudslide that blocked the road. When she arrives... Part of the city is underwater. It's been raining almost continuously for days. My sobrinito viene and me dice el río. So yo tenía que correr, he tenido que entrar por aquí a sacarle primero a mis hijos. Sí, eso es. Toda esta calle, esta es la calle Sorata, la calle principal. Era mayormente puro comercio. Lourdes is in Tipuani to meet some gold miners. With her organization, she tries to persuade them to give up this job that keeps them in poverty. But because of the floods, some families have left the city. The retired miner heads to the banks of the river. Despite the flood risks, she knows there will be women working there. It's a matter of survival. Along the way, the sites are appalling. The large industrial mines that share the best deposits are taking slices from the hill as if it were a cake. Este es el río grande, el río Tipuani, que se puede decir. Este es el río, es el Tipuani. río grande, Tipuani. Y los que no pueden entrar a la mina, esos ya trabajan así. Los enfermos, los viejitos, los discapacitados, ellos trabajan aquí. There's not much left to exploit on this side of the river. The miners are happy to find the smallest speck of gold. Maria is 38 years old and has worked here for five years. She's fighting to feed her two children. These coca leaves help take a mind off the hunger pangs. Most of these poor miners work on the other side of the riverbank. They have more chance of discovering gold there, but at a cost, it's twice as risky. The biggest danger is not this rickety cable trolley. <laughs> the bank is situated beneath an industrial mine. Families rummage through its waste in the hope that there is still some precious metal. Mm 
Bonito. Risking their lives for a speck of gold dust. The problem lies in the water release from the mine. Every day it poisons another gold miner and their food. Por decir, el agua es bien contaminada. Las cooperativas trabajan con mercurio. Entonces lo desechan al río. Y en el río las compañeras no saben protegerse. Unless kitted out in full protective gear, you will be exposed to the poison. Companies use mercury to separate precious metal from the earth. The gold sticks to it and forms an amalgam that is easy to retrieve from the bottom of a tank. Except the liquid metal is a scourge on the environment. It seeps into everything. Por eso adquirimos la enfermedad del cáncer del útero. Si tienes dinero, puedes salir a la ciudad. Y si no tienes dinero, tienes que morirte. Such is the case for these two teenagers. ¿Qué edad tienen ustedes? Yo tengo 17. Ya no tienen. Igual 17, misma edad tenemos. A los 14 trabajamos. Despite the ever-present fear that dangles over their head, families continue digging up the earth with an unwavering faith. Veo que están sufriendo. Yo de donde sea. Quisiera, hay veces digo, quisiera encontrarme así un oro grande que tenga unos 10 kilos, vender eso y ayudar a ellas, dar algo a ellas. Yo hay veces le digo, Señor, ayúdame con ese mi sueño que tengo. Digo, quiero salir de esta pobreza. Lourdes and her small association do not have the power to get these families out of poverty, but the former gold miner hopes that one day she will succeed in banning the use of mercury in gold mines. Maria, the shopkeeper, and her husband do not have an association, but their battle is just as commendable. They both risk taking a chaotic journey in order to rescue a village from isolation. With their mobile store, they spare the residents the ordeal of walking for hours through the mountains. Except for the couple, it's far from a walk in the park. Hey, no. No, voy a ir uno más bien se directo en comodar porque si no me voy a inclinar. Thirteen miles and three hours later, Maria and her husband can finally start unpacking. <laughs> The couple don't do this for money. 
In the mountains, there's practically no such thing as making a profit. Barely any can afford to put food on the table. Vendo caro, ¿no? Porque precio de consata del pueblo siempre dos bolillas la libre. El mismo precio doy solamente yo traigo de la paz y algo más me gano por eso nomás. Porque si podría traer de aquí del pueblo saldría más caro. Pues por cinco, ¿eh? Cuatro me has dicho. No, no es cinco, ¿eh? A vos cinco. Cuatro me has dicho. Decía no es cinco. No, cincuenta. Today in Bolivia, these courageous women like Maria and Lourdes are breaking free from the old patriarchal system. Deemed unthinkable up until a few years ago, they are becoming more and more involved in politics, in society and in the fight for the environment. Bolivian women have shown that their place is firmly rooted in society, equal to that of men. Mm -hmm.